Hello and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract. Well, let's go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. We'll scroll down to school and we've done all these lessons. So we're on the very last lesson, which is controls. We're in the second video. In the first video of controls, we took a look at parallax, which was a lot of fun to see. So you're welcome to go back and see that video or any of the other videos if you've just arrived, for sure. If we go into controls now, what I would like to do is right up top, we missed a few things. Well, we didn't miss. We, we talked about them. We wanted to see something visual. And as always, we'll see something visual today as well. We're going to look at the ticker. The ticker allows you to run code really, really fast. So we're going to look at that and see how we can animate with it and uh, make something follow a mouse, these types of things that the ticker will provide. We'll also look at damping and some of the basics of movement control. And then we'll take a look at a motion controller. Okay, well, let's uh, do that then. We'll come up to the top of the site and hit code. We'll copy our template. We'll reduce this down and pop on into Atom or any editor that you choose, preferably with syntax coloring. And then we'll get rid of the circle that's there and we are ready to code. <coughs> Ahem. Announcing the code. All right, so a ticker we use direct, directly on the ticker class. So, oh, <laughs> get that caps lock off, ticker.add. All right, so that's called a static method when we use the ticker class directly. So note that we're not making a new ticker and then trying to do something. So it's similar to the math.random, for instance, uh, is a, we'll get there. That is a method right on the class. So we call that a static method like that. There's only one math class. We only need one math class. It can do things like max and mins and sines and cosines and stuff. So same with the ticker. There's only one ticker. And if we want to add something to the ticker, it's like a master timer. It's running at the frame rate. So 30 frames per second on mobile, 60 frames per second on a desktop. Although you can adjust that. So uh, that's where we can do animation. As a matter of fact, Zim Animate also adds things to the ticker, and that's the nice thing. Uh, the ticker will automatically update the stage after it does all the things in it. It's like a queue. So anything we add to the ticker, we don't need to update the stage, because at the end of it, it will do a single stage.update. Uh, unless you tell it not to, there is a way to tell it that you want to manually do your stage.updates, but uh, that's fine. So we add a function here. We'll add an arrow function. I typed in AF and got myself an arrow function for ES6 arrow function there. Type in F and you can get yourself an anonymous function that still works in ES6, no problem. Anyway, inside here, let's zog that we're ticking away. Tick, 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 ticking, I'm going beyond ticking. Ah, just remembered. I don't know if we've seen much in terms of an interval and a timeout. So those are two other things that will go across time. A timeout happens only after a certain amount of time, and then it, ha it runs a function once. Uh, a an interval happens any time for that interval that you set. So you might set an interval of one second and then it will keep on running a function every second until you stop it. The Zim interval has some features where we can randomize that interval or make a series of that interval or just make a usual interval. So uh, I don't know if we'll need to see those, but they're similar. A ticker runs really, really fast. The other thing that runs really, 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 really fast is a loop. A loop runs so fast that you can't animate in it. It won't update the stage, and even if you say stage.update, that loop just happens instantly, and all the stage.updates would go bleh, and you'd only see one, one change. The ticker you can think of as the fastest thing you can do where you see change. All right, so let's see if we're zogging ticking, and we refresh here, or no, we open in a browser. Open browser. We don't see anything there, but if we F12 to get the console, there she be. It's ticking away. 
console is ticking away. So, bloop. Okay, uh, 60 frames per second there. All right, let's try, say, moving something, uh, animating something. So we will give that something a const of new circle. Oh, oh. <clears throat> const, and then the const name, circle is equal to a new circle. And we'll dot center that on the stage, like so. Then in here, we will say circle dot x is equal to the circles dot x plus one. Now you might be saying, oh, wait, 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 there's a short way of doing that. Yeah, there is. So what we're trying to do is we're saying, hey, whatever the circle's current x is, we're going to add one to it. And then we'll evaluate that and assign it back to the circle's x. Well, the shortcut is uh, plus equals 1, like that. Or you could plus equals 10. There's also just an even shorter one, plus plus, which is fine too. Let's plus equals because we're going to change the number from 1 in just a second. So do we need a stage.update? Stage.update. No, because the ticker will do that for us at the end of all of it, the functions that have been added. So in other words, you could add another function later to the ticker. All right, so let's refresh here. And there she goes. The circle is animating. It's increasing its x position by 1 as the ticker goes. Neat. And what about 10? Can you imagine? And what about negative 10? Well, <laughs> or perhaps minus equals, like that. Same thing. The other way. Okay, You could put bounds on that, like a classic game of Pong, for instance. <coughs> bounds on that and say, if the x is bigger than the stage x, then make it minus. So go minus in the direction. Usually you would have a direction variable. Do you want to just see that quickly? Uh, this wouldn't be a const, it would be let dir for direction equal 1. So we're going to be going in the positive direction. Uh, we usually keep that positive, and then we would say times dir. So now it will be times a positive 1. Then we use a conditional if circle dot x is greater than stage width then we will do what's in between the brackets here. We will say dir is equal to, and we, uh, I guess minus one is fine there. We could multiply it by minus one to make it bounce back and forth and do two conditionals in here. If it's bigger than the stage width or less than the stage or less than zero, then we could you know bounce. Now this will bounce, but it won't bounce perfectly, but uh, it will bounce. So we refresh here. Boing. And then off it goes that way. So it didn't. You see why it's not bouncing perfectly? Because the center of the circle. So that would be minus circle dot radius. So the center of the circle is going to the edge of the stage. We really want the right hand edge. Let's slow this down a touch. We'll make it five. And we'll refresh here. Let's see what happens. Boing. Nice, huh? Refresh. Boing. All right, so there's that kind of thing, but we can also make the circle follow the mouse. That would be is equal to the frame gives us a mouse x property that we can use to find out the, the x of the mouse at any time. It captures that for us. So circle.x equals frame.mouse x, and we save that up. We refresh here. You see, I just like immediately went to my mouse, which was over here. And there we have the circle following the mouse X. But you see how jittery that is? It's just like, pew, 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 pew. Let's see if we can make that smoother. And for that, we use damping. Damping is a way that instead of going directly to where the mouse is, for instance, we go partway there. And so if you have a damping of 0.1, you would go 0.1 the distance there. So that's 10% the distance there each time. 
So when it starts, if the distance is far, that 10 per, or that 10 percent is going to be big, but as it, as it gets closer, the 10 percent keeps getting smaller, and it creates a, a nice effect. Now the equation is not very difficult. Well, it's not long, but it is tricky because it's sort of self-referential, and I can never remember it. People, you know, it's it's hard to kind of put your mind around it. It's like oh, because you're setting itself equal to the self times point one, or but it's not quite that easy. It's like two two or three lines, two lines maybe, but it's tricky. So uh, Zim, we wrap that for us, and uh, well, we don't need the dir anymore. So we can say const damp in the x is equal to a new damp class like that, or well, new damp object. So we're going to make a new damp object out of that. We can say how much to damp in there too, but let's just make a default for now. And then down below here, instead of going directly to this value, we say our damp uh, object, damp x, dot convert, and then in round brackets. So that converts this absolute number, in a sense, to a damp number that's only 0.1% uh, the way there. All right, let's try her out. Like I said, it's nicer to see it happening rather than to talk about it. Oh yeah, quite the difference, huh? So it never just jumps there. It it <clears throat> it moves smoothly there. We can slow that down. Do you want to try slowing it down? Uh, the first thing about the damp is where is the first place it's going to start? So if you wanted your object starting in the middle of the stage, for instance, you could say. Uh, Put, put the object in the middle of the stage, oh, which it is, and then we could say go immediate, make the damping go immediately there. Anyway, we'll bypass that for now. And the next one is how much do we want to damp? So I think that's the default. So we'll go to point zero 0.01. This will be slower. And we refresh here. There we go. You see that? And that might be nice for an elephant. Might even be too fast for an elephant. <laughs> anyway, if you put a damp of one, it will go immediately there. So that's how that works. All right, let's not do slow in both. Let's do point one, and we'll do the same thing for the y. Basically, it's the same thing, but with the y. And then here we would copy and paste circle dot y, and then we damp based on the mouse y. Don't forget to change all those things. So usually if you're doing the same thing for a Y or you know, you got something in the horizontal, something in the vertical, they're pretty well the same, except you swap the X and the Y. Sometimes you'll swap a width and a height, that type of thing. All right, if I refresh here, let's try it out. <laughs> something broke. You see why? <laughs> I don't quite know why, but there's definitely something broken. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. Damp. We're using the wrong damping object. Damp Y. We missed that Y. That sometimes happens for sure, especially if things get a bit more complicated. There we go. Nice. Okay. How would we? How would we leave a trail? Should we try leaving a trail? That's a classic. So. Uh, we can just make a new circle at it. That that would do it. So there's there's that circle. Um, maybe we don't even make that circle there. We'll cut it and paste it in here. And what would that mean? I think we don't do any damping anymore. So do we? Yeah, I guess I guess we could place the circle. We wouldn't center it. We're not wanting it to follow forever. We just want to place the circles. Yeah, so it won't be a const, it will be let. So inside here, we're going to let circle equal a new circle. So we make a new circle. We do need to add it. Uh, this right now is just placing its x and y, so we haven't added it. A shortcut to place it would be dot loc, like that. And we want to loc can we look at a damp? I'm not sure. I suppose we could probably. I haven't. I don't know if I've actually tried this before. And then we look at a damp y as well. Copy that. Paste there. So what x and y are we going to locate this at? 
we won't locate it directly at the uh, we won't locate it directly at where the the mouse X and mouse Y is. We'll locate it at a damped version of it. <laughs> no, I'm not like I said. I don't think I've ever tried this, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's pretty pretty smooth, pretty dark. <laughs> So normally I would have put that circle right at it, but I actually like that. It's it, it's not going directly at the mouse. It's smoothly uh, smoothly being damped there. Um, some of the things we can do to help that out is set a dot alpha, dot alp of 0.1 or maybe even 0 0.01. Let's see what 0.1 looks like. Ooh, cool. What do you think? Now, that's lasting a long time, and that's a lot of circles. So you might eventually bog it, because every time it refreshes, it needs to redraw that vector circle. So there's techniques that you can use with dynamics. Basically, what you really want to do is make a picture of what you've drawn, and then when you draw a new one, make a picture of what you've drawn, and that way the picture doesn't have to be redrawn. The picture is just an image that says, oh, that's an image I've already drawn you. It's in cache. It, it was just keep it there. So even currently, while we're not even moving there, that's another thing. We're not even moving and it's still continuously uh, drawing circles. Now when we do the damping like that, that's how we have to do it. We have to be in a ticker. If you were not damping, you could do this in a mouse move. So you would only do it when the stage has its mouse moving event and or a press move, for instance, if we wanted to press rather than just follow. Uh, I wanted to show you animating those things out. Um, so when we make the circle, we'll locate it. We will also say dot animate. And we're going to want to wait here. So we'll drop down to the Zim Duo technique. I was just trying to figure out if we're going to do that or not. Props will be the alpha, mm, alpha, colon to zero. We will wait mm, one second, maybe, before it does that. This will say how long the tail, in a sense, is going to be. So if we wait a second, it's going to be a second of existence, and then it will animate down. And the time, we can make two seconds. So that's kind of like a slow animate down. You can change that too. And then when it's done, we'll call uh, this arrow function right here. So when the animation's done, call this function that will say uh, remove the circle. Now the function's given the target or whatever's animating. So we call that the target. So the an what's animating is the target. It will be this circle. All right. So target dot remove from. There we go. We don't need a stage dot update. I think the last animate usually does one last an up update before the uh, the call there, or keeps keeps the ticker alive till that call is done. All right, there. See, okay, so that's a fairly long tail. I also don't particularly like the way it starts refresh because we haven't put the mouse in there. Look, it's just kind of hanging on the corner, and it's got this. It's at zero zero just hanging there. So there are ways that we could uh, fix that. Um, you would find out if there's a mouse move on the stage and then you could start your stuff. Don't even show a circle until you've got until your mouse is on the stage. Okay and there it is. If that's too long for us, which it might be, I'd like to adjust. Well, you know, we can play with this. <laughs> this is playable. That's what um, comes from uh, the coding. You could also animate comma scale colon three or something like that. Just see what, what does that do? So it's, it's all these things. We're not going to wait a thousand. We'll wait 300. And in time, we're going to say more like 500 like that. And we'll make an alpha of 0.2. Oops, <laughs> I had the point. And we refresh here, and let's do some uh, creative coding. Ready? Whoosh. Wow. Whoosh. Hey there, big tail. See, I've never tried this before. That's pretty cool, though, isn't it? 
never tried it before, and that's just what happens. You know, code is, there's always new marvelous things you can do. We could animate color too. So, the color, oh, we need a comma in there. Because remember, our object literal format is the name of the uh, name of the property, its value, name of the property value with commas in between. Color, colon, we could probably, let's see, do we have to randomize in here? Props, uh, we're passing in props. Yeah, I think we'd have to, we can't use the zim v value in here and wouldn't accept it. We'll just say blue for now. Blue. Let's see if that works. <laughs> Neat, huh? What about the tail the other way? That's a little bit unusual. If we go to scale of zero, um, all right, let's try that. What color is our circle? Let's make our circle start off with a color. 50 comma. We could make it start off with random colors, but uh, I think that actually works random colors if you make it in the circle itself, it knows to Make the colors green. Don't know if that's going to look good though. Uh, green, yellow, orange. There we go. And let's put this all on black. Black. Let's see what it looks like. Ready? <laughs> All right, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, now we mentioned a motion controller as well. We're uh, moving along in time here, but we may be able to get a motion controller in, I suppose. Uh, perhaps we'll want to look at it further in another one. Um, new motion controller. And um, we would say what we want to control. How about we comment all the ticker out? It's probably the easiest. Do we still have a circle made? We did have a circle at one point, but I think the circle's gone. We moved it inside, so copy that. Oh, for Pete's sake, that's my slack is just going. Every time you hear a plink, 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 that's like a slack alert. That's like. 15 messages later, geez. So, uh, hey, hi Slack people, glad you're there. <laughs> um, let circle, uh, this will be a const circle in this time. Const circle is a new circle, 50, we'll just make it one of these colors, we'll make it blue. No, it actually wasn't one of those colors. And we'll want to dot center that on the stage, for instance. And then the motion controller can go to the circle. Um, uh, like that. So put a motion controller on the circle. Let's see how that goes. We refresh here. Whoop. And now the default for a motion controller is a, a mouse down like that. So now what's happening basically is that circle is going to wherever I'm pressing. If we want a mouse like a follow, there's a whole bunch of different types of things we can do. We could say uh, mouse move. So the second parameter there is the type of motion controller. So refresh that. And now you can see that as we move, it's following our movement. Neat, huh? We can also use keyboard controls. So key down, like so. And then we refresh here. It doesn't move with the mouse, but as I move my keyboard like that, it handles key movement. You can do that yourself with a key event. You can also set it to only go horizontally, for instance, if you're wanting to catch things that are falling or avoid things that are falling. Okay, but you've got that. There's all sorts of different things that you can do with a motion controller. Uh, why don't we go take a peek at the site? Uh, Zim, come on up to examples, boop, and we're looking for something that looks like a butterfly. 
and we'll be in there. It's down in the second part here. Something that looks like a butterfly. There we go, controllers. Now we have had, we've added other motion controllers since this time. Uh, but here we have a sprite and it's following the mouse. Nice, huh? And if we make it follow the mouse down, there it is. Whenever I click, it follows it. Key downs, game buttons, and swipe. If we swipe, we can kind of keep on swiping it to one way or up. So that would be uh, nice on mobile, perhaps. Or maybe mobile is fine with the mouse down. Or you just tap on it and it would go there. Another thing that we can do with uh, the motion controller is we can control a pen. We can control a pen by just dragging it. We can control a pen uh, in the ticker. But uh, the motion controller has a special one called a press down, which really helps us. In other words, it's going to, as we press down, something will jump right to where we pressed, and then we'll start controlling it from there. It's perfect for a pen. However, we want to control a pen, so we'll comment out the circle for now, and we will make a const called pen. Const pen is equal to a new pen. There's all sorts of things that we can do in a pen, but we do need to add it to the stage as well. I don't know if you've noticed, but the, the controls usually work on something that's already uh, available. It's already a, there's a display object, and then we use the controls to control it. So that's how we, for the most part, differentiated there. When we make particles, we um, we the particles are already created, and the, the particle emitter is emitting them. When we do a scroller, the backgrounds are already created, and we scroll them. When we do parallax, they're already created, and we parallax them. And here we're motion controlling something that already exists, and in this case, it's our pen. So uh, there's the pen. Now, pen, I think, defaults to black, so we might want to change the color to pink, a pink pen like that. And let's see what happens. That's a press move, I think, or press down. All right, let's try it. Right. Come back here, and when we press down, oh yeah. So there we are controlling a pen. Whoop. Now the pen stops as soon as we lift up. It stops, but that kind of makes sense for a pen, doesn't it? Nice, huh? Now there's all sorts of different things, as mentioned, that we can do with a pen. Shall we see some of them? If we go to the Zim site and hit examples, there's the Gen Pen. And we have different types of pens that we can make, like a splatter. Here's what a splatter looks like. <laughs> and there's also a city. <laughs> nice. There we go. I think we, I think we just made the pollution of the city. <laughs> okay, so a city, and there's some grass. <laughs> there's some grass, and even a kite tail. Um, the there's different layers as well. So here we'll make the kite tail. That's not a very nice one. Undo that. You can change the easing of it there. Ooh, there we go. And uh, if you want, you can move that. There's the kite tail in front of the city. Or we could click on the city and move it up a layer. Now the kite tail is behind the city or behind that layer. So this was all made with, with Zim. It's quite an in-depth app. It even takes you through how you can dynamically change those pens to adjust what they look like and how they work. As a matter of fact, we feature some of the arts, art made by the pen on the Zim site. So under Gen Art right here, the first bunch of things were made with the pen. Nice, huh? Look like lampshades or something, <laughs> sculptures. These are all the different things that we made with, with Gen Pen. Okay, we took a look at some basic controls of movement. 
And in the next video, perhaps we'll take a look at a scroller effect and, a, and a, maybe that sprite and the dynamo and some things that make sprites go. That will be very visual and fun. This was more of a basic one, although we did see some nice, nice uh, follow the cursor type art. That's kind of cool. If you're interested in that, there's more examples of that type of thing and also how to do it officially, uh, efficiently. It's called blitting, B-L-I-T-T-I-N-G, for um, some performance uh, that will solve any performance issues. Okay, cool. <laughs> Nice. So that's animating to sound with a sound wave. Perhaps we'll see something like that. Maybe we'll look at some noise. I'm not sure what other controls we're going to look at in the future. I am Dr. Abstract. I hope to see you again. Come on in to zimjs.com slash slack and you can be leaving, the, leaving those little toot 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 toots too with questions or comments. <laughs> Ciao.